So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is answering your airbrush related questions. So if you have a question that you want me to answer, pop it in the comments below. I'm checking them out and then picking questions that I think will help our audience and I'll make a video on that. So let's get into the video right now. So usually I'm gonna be focusing, as I said, on one question. So to kick off this video, seeing it's the first one, I thought I'd pick this person's three questions. So let's get into Scotty Turner's questions right now. So Scotty's first question is, I know you recommend the Eclipse, but what are your thoughts of the Neo as a starting point? So the Awata Neo is the entry level brush from the Awata family. It has a 0.35 needle nozzle setup, which is the same as the HPCS Eclipse, which is what I recommend a lot of the time to beginners. However, the Neo is something that we use in our classes and it is definitely a great brush to use. So you can still achieve fine detail and reasonable spray, not as broad a spray as something like the Eclipse or the Revolution. Uh, the Revolution also, the HPCR now comes in a 0.3. So that's something to think about if you're looking for an entry level brush. So I think the reason I recommend say the Revolution or the Eclipse over the Neo is for that sort of price point, yes, you have to spend a little bit more for those other brushes, the Revolution or the Eclipse. However, the biggest takeaway is that the Neo is made in Taiwan for Iwata, whereas the uh, Revolution and all the way up to the Micron, so the rest of the Iwata family, is all made in Japan. So because it is made in Taiwan and not Japan, the quality of the product isn't as good. That said, it's survived for more than four years in our classes since we introduced the Neo to our students. So that's a good test because they do get butchered, as you can imagine. And all I usually do is um, swap the needles and the nozzles. The one big thing from the Neo, which I find is that the nozzle is a lot softer. And if you do get a flare in the nozzle or you uh, split the nozzle tip, well then what happens is the Neo begins to bubble back. The only way to fix it is to put a new nozzle in. Whereas some of the other brushes, if you slightly damage your nozzle or you get a bit of a slight flare, you'll find that the airbrush will go single action, but you can generally still use it or it could be spraying sideways. So that's something to think about. So to sum it up, yes, the Neo I would recommend for beginners, but if you've got the extra money, spend it on the Revolution, maybe the 0.3 mil, or step up to the Eclipse, the 0.35 Eclipse, the HPCS, and you will not be disappointed. They are fantastic brushes, high quality, and obviously there's other brands too. Are we just talking about Iwata because that was the question coming from Scott. So Scotty's second question is, I know this is a cliche question, but if you could advise yourself when you first started airbrushing, what would the advice be? So that is a fantastic question. And this is one of the reasons why I picked Scotty's uh, questions and we ran with it in this video. So I think this deserves a few different answers because there's not just one little thing that I would advise myself. I think the first thing, and this relates to all beginners, is that you need to focus on the double action. So it doesn't matter what airbrush you've got, what brand, doesn't matter whether it's gravity, siphon, you need to focus on the double action. That is the most important thing when you are first starting to airbrush. If you can master the double action, then everything else will follow. So don't jump straight into trying to paint all of this really complicated artwork. Focus on the double action, continue to practice those basic exercises like your lines, your dots, your dagger strokes, all those sorts of things, and that will help you with your airbrushing hands down. Another answer to this question is that you need to paint what you see. Obviously, when you're designing your own artwork, it's all in your head, but if you are, working off a reference or you want to paint portraits or anything that you want to resemble exactly to the reference, then just paint what you see. It's amazing how much your eye tricks you. So focus on the artwork if you need to. Cut yourself like a square out of a bit of paper and block off the rest of your reference and just look at that one section and that will help you. There's other methods as well where you can turn your um, artwork upside down if that's possible, if it's a canvas or illustration board, something like that. Turn your reference upside down as well and just paint what you see so that way your eye doesn't play tricks on you. But that's another key takeaway is paint what you see. And the last thing that I would recommend and 
I don't think this is that much of an issue, but when I started, I was trying to do everything freehand. I was so anti-masking, anti-stencils. And I think that's one thing that I would have told myself years ago, make it easier for yourself, especially if you want to do this for a living. Use templates, use the tools that are there for you. Even if you're doing portraits, there's nothing wrong with using the blade, the eraser, whatever it is, to create that better end result is what you want to use. So it is art after all. It doesn't have to be 100% freehand airbrushing. If that's something that you're focused on and you wanna do, and by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I mean, there's some amazing artists that can achieve incredible results with just that 100% freehand. But in my opinion, if you can make it a bit easier for yourself and utilize the tools that are available, then that's something that I'd recommend you do. And Scotty's final question is, do you think you'll be producing online classes in the future and possibly do a similar style classroom in a box much like Drew does, but with more of your style artwork? So in regards to online classes, uh, there is a very good chance that that's gonna be happening. I do have a course that I've been building in the background for quite some time, and I've already uploaded to that platform much of my beginner's exercises as well as some of the other projects we do in my introductory airbrush course, as well as extras. That said, the exact release date, I can't give you yet. I've been saying it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out, but I've sort of um, put a lot more time into, you know, doing two videos on this channel and focusing at the moment on um, trying to grow this audience but that's definitely something that's in the background. In regards to doing something similar to Drew Blair, Drew is a good friend. I love what he does with his classroom in a box and I highly recommend it. And definitely if you wanna learn photorealism, he's 100% the guy to go to. He is incredible what he does, fantastic teacher. He's the best person to show you that. If you want my style of artwork, Look, at this stage, YouTube videos is what I'm focusing on, as I said. Then online courses will be rolling out. So initially it's gonna be a beginner's class because most of my viewers are just new to airbrushing. As I release them, I'm planning on doing more focused artworks and then I might integrate that with some sort of a template or something. I'm not sure at this stage, but I won't be doing exactly what Drew does with his classroom in a box because I respect what he does and I would never copy what he does. But my online version will be on most likely a separate platform or within a membership sort of structure here on YouTube. So that is it for the first Q&A video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Scotty Turner for those fantastic questions. I am already collecting all of the questions that are standing out to me and compiling a list so that I can continue to release these sort of videos. If you want your question answered, then make sure you put it in the comments below. I'm gonna check them out and again, if anything stands out, I'll add it to my list and you will see that video come out and I'll definitely give you a shout out like I did here with Scotty Turner. Hope you enjoyed this video, like it if you do, share it if you wanna help someone else who is just starting with airbrushing or just an all round enthusiast. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.